in this lecture, we're going to be talking about the binomial distribution. Now, the binomial distribution is really useful for any experiment where there are only two possible outcomes, and you intend to conduct this experiment multiple times. So, for example, this quarter, there are only two possible outcomes. If I flip it, it's going to land on our heads or it's going to land on our tails. Or if I ask you, are you a Republican? You're either going to say yes or you're going to say no. And let's say I want to do this multiple times and I want to understand what is going to be the result of doing this experiment multiple times. The binomial distribution can help us understand that. Now, let's be more specific. There are three characteristics of a binomial experiment. First off, there has to be a fixed number of trials meaning that you can only do this a very a specific certain number of times, maybe five times, ten times. So, for example, if I have this coin, I want to know what is going to be the result if I flip this coin five times in a row. Well, there's a lot of different possibilities. I can get heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, ta heads, tails, heads, tails, heads. I can get a bunch of different possibilities. But the binomial distribution will help me understand how, um, you know, how many heads I'm going to get say, after five flips, or how many tails I'm going to get after five flips. Um, so we have a specific fixed number of trials here. Um, think of trials as repetitions of an experiment. The letter N, which we're going to be using uh, really frequently um, with binomial uh, experiments, denotes the number of trials. There are only two possible outcomes called success and failure. Now, this is just the term that we uh, mathematicians use. Um, there's nothing special about the, these terms. Um, so, for example, if I have a coin, what would be considered a success? Well, you get to define that. You get to pick which option is a success, and then the other option would be defined as a failure. So maybe we want to know how many co how many heads we flip after five flips. Um, maybe I can get three, I can get two, I can get one. You know, there's lots of different options here. Um, but we would label in that scenario a head as a success and a tail as a failure. Or you could do vice versa. It really doesn't make a dip, much of a difference, so long as you understand that heads is success, tails is failure, or if you want to uh, think about tails is success and heads is a failure. Uh, same goes for, like, are you a Republican? What is success and failure in that sense, if you're doing, like, a survey? Well, I mean, the idea is you're supposed to be, um, you just pick a side, more or less, as this is going to be a success, this is going to be a failure. It's not like one is better than the other, it's just... Uh, labels to put on both sides of this um, uh, of the variable or the experiment result. Uh, the letter P denotes the probability of a success, so we're going to see that quite frequently. Um, and uh, Q is going to denote a failure. And so it's really important, by the way, to understand that Q is going to be one minus P. Or another way of thinking about it, that Q plus P should equal one. This is really important. The, the probability either you're going to get a success or a failure with binomial distributions. If you define, for example, a Republican as a success and a Democrat as a failure, then this is uh, then the binomial distribution is not useful because you could be an independent or maybe you're a libertarian or you're a progressive and you don't define yourself as a Democrat or a Republican, so to speak. And so you have to understand that either uh, you're either the result of an experiment is going to be a success or a failure, one or the other. Um, not neither, not both. So that's what it says here. P plus Q should equal one. The N trials are independent and are repeated using identical conditions. So you want to make sure that when you repeat the, the trial, you're going to have identical conditions for how you set it up. You don't want one trial to influence any other trial. You want all trials to be independent of each other. Because the end trials are independent, the outcome of one trial does not help in predicting the outcome of another trial. Another way of saying this is that for each individual trial, the probability P of a success and a probability Q of a failure remains the same. So you don't want to influence any of the results uh, throughout the, the experiments. Uh, so last but not least, the outcomes of a binomial experiment fit what's called a probability, a binomial, binomial probability distribution. The random variable X equals the number of successes obtained in the N independent trials. So in this case, maybe I want to know, um, how many successes am I going to get if I flip this coin five times? And I'm going to define tails to be a success. And so we would expect to see around two and a half, two to three um, tails, those would be the, um, highest likely res uh, result of all six flip after all six flips or five flips or whatever it was, but you get the idea. 
Now, that being said, um, the mean and variance for the probability distributions are mu equals NP. That means that if, for example, um, let's assume that this coin is 50-50. The chance of success is 0.5. The chance of failure is 0.5. Heads is going to be a success. And we flip this coin 10 times. What should we expect to be the result of flipping this coin 10 times? How many successes do you expect to see? Well, the answer is five. If there's 10 flips, then five of them should be heads and five of them should be tails. Now, that's definitely not going to be guaranteed the case, but that's what we can expect to be. If we were to put our money down on something, that would probably be the most likely outcome. That being said, however, that might not happen. Um, so how do we get five? Well, we took 10 and we multiplied it by the probability of success, which is N, in this case, NP is 10 times 0.5, the probability of success, which is in that case, five. And then our standard deviation is the square root of N times P times Q. And another, uh, a lot of people write this as um, the square root of N times P times one minus P. Because again, Q is just one minus P. Because Q and P add up to 1. So that's another way of, of writing it. N times P times 1 minus P is the standard deviation. And so the binomial distribution is going to follow sort of like a, uh, a bell curve, if you will. And where this is the expectation, mu, and standard deviation is just the square root of N times P times Q. It's very much like a bell curve, but the problem with it is that it's not a con the the variable here is not a continuous variable. It's discrete. Like for example, if I flip this coin ten times, we can expect the middle to be five. Yeah, let me write that five over here. But we can't quite get five point one or five point two heads. We're, we can expect five heads. We might expect four heads maybe or six heads. But it's a discrete variable. So keep in mind that it's technically not a bell curve. It more looks something like this, the, the prob probability distribution. It looks more like a, a histogram. But the, it's, it's actually more, to me, in my opinion, like a, dot, a mix of a dot plot and a bar graph. And so maybe this is um, one heads, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, six heads. Um, so this would be basically the distribution if you were to flip this coin six times, we can probably get either a three or a four. Um, most likely, oh, sorry, I forgot a zero. Well, this is if you, sorry, zero. Let me adjust that real quick. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. This would be the probability distribution of flipping a quarter five times. We can expect to see a two or a three, but we could get one heads. We could get four heads. We could get five heads. We could get zero heads, but most likely we're gonna get two or three heads. Um, and so if you notice, it looks a lot like a bell curve, but it's not quite a bell curve because this is a discrete uh, variable. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture.